Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy and today we're discussing a very important joint of the head and neck known as the temporomandibular joint the name says it it is forming between the temporal bone and the mandible so here is a skull right here so you know what exactly is happening the first part about this you need to know is what is the type of this joint it is condylar variety sidereal joint because the condyle of the mandible is going to meet your uh, fossa so what are the articulating surface we already have studied in normal lateralis and the mandible that the first important uh, part is the articular tubercle that lies just uh, below the zygomatic arch in front and then we have this mandibular fossa right here which is a depression uh, in the uh, temporal bone inferiorly plus there is a posterior non articular part formed by the tympanic plate and then we have the what are the lower articular surface this is the head of the mandible of course and that's the only articular surface below temporomandibular joint is divided by an intra articular disc into an upper and a lower compartment remember that now let's go ahead and talk about the ligaments of the temporomandibular joint the first thing in ligaments i've already told you is always going to be the capsular ligament which basically means the fibrous capsule of the joint all right so the fibrous capsule is always this ligament that is completely surrounding the joint it's like a uh, you can say like cover of the joint like the entire joint is covered by it so what is the attachment of the capsular ligament it is attached above to the articular tubercle and then the circumference of the mandibular fossa femotympanic fissure and then below it is attached to the neck of the mandible so it is attached right here so like that it's completely covering your temporomandibular joint it is loose above the intraarticular disc and below is it is tight we have the lateral ligament of the temporomandibular joint also known as the lateral temporotm ligament temporomandibular ligament right so this is a very important ligament because it posteriorly strengthens your uh, temporomandibular joint so uh, uh, around the fibrous capsule lateral part is attached like it's just strengthening that part of the fibrous capsule laterally so the ligament runs from it has similar attachments above it is attached to your articular tubercle and below it is attached to the neck it is running downwards and backwards so it's almost like that all right the important part of this ligament is that this external acoustic meatus is protected from damage by this lateral ligament next ligament we have is known as a sphenomandibular ligament now this is a ligament which runs between the it, the name says it's sphenomandibular so it runs between the uh, sphenoid bone spine and goes down below and attaches to lingula of the mandible we remember uh, anterior to the mandibular foramen we had this uh, tongue like projection known as the lingula that's where it goes this basically is a remnant of the michel's cartilage which is derived from the first pharyngeal arch so that is an important part you should remember that and the final ligament of the temporomandibular joint is known as the stylomandibular ligament name says it it comes from the styloid process of the temporal bone and it goes down and basically it gets attached right here this is like the angle and posteriorly to the angle of the um, mandible so these are very important ligaments make sure you memorize the names of these ligaments now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the intraarticular uh, capsule of your tmj so this is let's let's suppose this is the articular tubercle this is your mandibular fossa above so this is superior view and this is inferiorly we have the head of mandible intraarticular disc is responsible it comes in the between this entire tmj uh, cavity and it divides your tmj into upper part and a lower part the upper part is known as the menisco temporal part obviously because it is uh, between the temporal bone and your meniscus and the lower part is known as the menisco mandibular compartment between these two makes sense really the point of this capsule is that some movements occur in the upper compartment some occur in the lower compartment uh, in the upper compartment mostly glide gliding movements are occurring in the lower there are rot rotatory plus gliding movements occurring basically it concave or convex disc above but below it's only concave all right so it is also has like various parts there is an anterior band an anterior extension an intermediate zone and posterior thick band and a bilaminar region so these are the parts of the intraarticular disc the basic functions of this disc are and the first thing is it prevents the friction obviously between the two articulating surface the second is that helps in shock absorption then it has a proper set of receptive fibers that allow you to regulate movements of the joint and then it also allows for the distribution of the weight these are like four functions remember one important thing is that this articular disc is attached to the lateral pterygoid muscle all right this is a very important uh, relation i want to remember because the lateral pterygoid muscle is going to pull the disc forwards when it causes protraction let's talk about uh, the blood supply and the nerve supply of your temporomandibular joint this includes your 
Uh, blood supply is the superficial temporal artery, which is lying at the temporal region. Obviously, that's going to supply this along with the maxillary artery, which comes from it, right? And the nerve supplies the auricular temporal and the masseteric nerves, both are branches of the mandibular nerve. Let's talk about the movements of the TMJ. Basically, your TMJ can perform five movements. First movement is the depression, which causes your mouth to open. The elevation causes your mouth to close. Then we have the protrusion pulling the mandible forward, retrusion, bringing it back to its original position. And finally, there's these side to side movements during, during when you perform chewing or grinding, right? So these movements are important. Let me just give you a brief overview of these movements. So the first movement is going to be the depression and elevation. The depression and elevation are going to occur around a vertical axis. Then we have protraction and retrusion or retraction. These two are occurring around a horizontal axis. The chewing movements that occur or the grinding movements that occur, these occur around a mid-sagittal axis, which is imaginary, all right? You guys remember when the protraction occurs, since your lateral pterygoid is going to be causing the protraction, right? So when the lateral pterygoid is causing protraction, it pulls the articular disc with it. So when it goes with it, usually the articular disc moves in the meniscotemporal compartment, all right? That's how protraction is uh, caused. So the protraction occurs in the upper meniscotemporal compartment, similar for the retraction, obviously occurring in the upper compartment. Whereas, let me talk about the depression. When depression is occurring at a small amount, for instance, just a small degree of depression is occurring, right? This occurs in the meniscomandibular compartment. Or if you want to open the mouth wide, what happens is slight depression is done, meniscomandibular compartment, the movement is occurring. But when you open the mouth very wide, the depression is accompanied by some protraction in the upper compartment. So remember that, that whenever there's depression movement occurring, slight opening is done in the meniscomandibular compartment, whereas a wide opening of the mouth involves a little bit of protraction as well and it occurs in the upper compartment. So this uh, wide open mouth depression occurs in both the compartments, whereas slight degree of depression occurs in only the meniscomandibular compartment. Now let's talk about the muscles that are producing these movements. Depression of the mandible is caused by the main muscle. This is the lateral pterygoid. Along with that, it's taking the help of some gravity and other muscles include the digastric, the geniohyoid and the mylohyoid muscles. These two, three muscles were all attached to the mandible we've talked about in attachments. Next, we have the elevation movement. Movement of elevation, I want you to remember the mnemonic MM Tavom, all right? MM Tavom stands for M for the masseter muscle, all right? And the other M is the medial pterygoid muscle. And finally, we have the temporalis muscle causing the elevation. But which fibers of the temporalis muscle? These are the anterior vertical and the the oblique middle fibers. Basically, your temporalis has anterior vertical fibers, then it has oblique mi middle fibers and posterior horizontal fibers. So going from uh, anterior to posterior, your fibers are basically turning direction like that. All right. And uh, for the case of masseter, it has like superficial oblique fibers and then it has deep uh, vertical fibers. So remember these things for now. So we've already used which fibers? The anterior vertical and we've also used the middle oblique fibers. Let's talk about the protraction now. Protraction is produced by both the pterygoid muscles lateral and medial pterygoid muscles it is also accompanied by these superficial oblique fibers of the masseter muscle all right for this you can use the mnemonic p song p for the pterygoid s for the superficial o for the oblique m for the masseter muscle fibers then we have retraction since we've used these fibers what fibers are left whatever the fibers are left are going to be performing the retraction these are the posterior horizontal plus the deep vertical fibers of the masseter muscle. So both temporalis plus masseter are producing this movement. Which ones are left? The posterior horizontal and the deep vertical fibers of the masseter muscle. Now let's talk about the chewing movements. Uh, these are just produced by a combination of all of these muscles. So for instance, you're chewing from the left side, then your right pterygoids are involved and the same side temporalis and masseter are involved. Temporalis's anterior fibers are involved, the masseter's deep fibers are involved. That's all you need to remember for the chewing. So let's suppose left chewing done by the right pterygoids. It is done by the left or the uh, ipsilateral sides temporalis in anterior fibers and masseter deep fibers. Let's talk about this important clinical of the TMJ, which is related to its dislocation. If there is ever any dislocation of the mandible, 
the way of reducing mandibular dislocation is done by you basically place your thumbs on the last molar tooth and you cause depression of the mandible and while you're causing depression of the mandible you pull the chin forwards so this is the movement you're performing right this is how you reduce the dislocation of the mandible let's go over the relations of the tmj first thing is that laterally uh, the parotid gland will be kept over here along with skin superficial region and the facial nerve that enters and divides into its five branches right uh, if you talk about medially we will see the, the tympanic plate the spine of the sphenoid Tympanic plate is going to separate your uh, TMJ from the internal carotid artery. The sphenomandibular ligament is attached here, so obviously that will also be included. And the auricular temporal and corda tympani nerves are also going to be here. Uh, and the middle meningeal artery is an important medial relation. All right. Anteriorly, the uh, lateral pterygoid, which pushes forward, I've already talked about, masseteric nerve and artery. These because they basically have to climb the uh, mandibular notch. Uh, posteriorly again parotid gland some super superficial temporal vessels are basically lying over here like that vertically and they release the uh, maxillary artery and superiorly is the middle cranial fossa and middle meningeal vessel so guys that was all you need to know about the temporal mandibular joint really hope i made it easy for you subscribe to my channel and until then thank you so much for watching